How's it going pals? This is Ernest and welcome to Firewatch. I don't know much about this game but all I know is that you're a guy that takes a job being a lookout in like a forest or something. That's basically all I know so let's just jump into this. Let's get started. This is my new initiative to try to get more games out there and start playing them. So I got this one. I have the um, creative verse and I also have a new one coming as well so be on the lookout for that. So I do know that this game is very story driven, so I just wanted to throw that out there. So I'm going to try not to talk over the story as much as possible because that really annoys me when people do. So, you know, Boulder, Colorado in 1975. So is this an old school game or is this like a backstory? You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors, <laughs> professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So what's your, you know, major? You, you're very pretty. Uh, let's go with this one. You slur the word major and it smell, smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. To toxicology? Was that a burn you asked? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One le week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Alrighty then. Okay, I'm in an elevator. Oh, I got a backpack. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, do I just get in the truck? I'm just gonna. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there was anything else I could have seen. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. So, you're an alcoholic. Great. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Uh, let's go with what she wants. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asked. By the way, guys, I do know that uh, whatever you pick also determines your story. So, Kids, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots, one day while rush, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that the parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Okay. That was odd. Okay. There's a map. Can... Okay, I can't. So is this the Colorado, uh, like, mountains? I was going to say Rockies, but I'm not sure about my geography. Oh, wait. Okay, so it's doing the story. Okay. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting anger by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad. You ignore her. We'll go with ignore. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man or you frolic like... Okay, He-Man. You look awesome. <laughs> all right. I really like the visuals of this. It's very, very pretty. Like, very, very pretty. Like, it's crazy how pretty it is. Oops. I'm trying to figure out the run button. There it is. It's an R randomly. That's kind of weird. 
space bar to climb over. Cool. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Holy shit. Bucket gets kicked. Ba ba ba. <clears throat> the dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat his goddamn face in. I just scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three. You manage to scare all three of you. That what? He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from the day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Uh, let's go with that. I don't agree with like not letting anyone go for their ambitions. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'd be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on colleagues for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him t just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and... Uh, let's do that one. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from an early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Ooh. Okay. So, we're having a little secret, see? I mean, that's okay. I can't do anything. Oh, there it is. He man. Remember, she drew this. Oh, apparently, I was naked during it. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. Uh, this is 1987. Uh, she can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get uh, the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by and little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. So this has took a very sad turn. 1988, the year I was born. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. She, uh, he suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. Uh, yeah, because if I'm not there to... If I can't take over her myself, then, you know, who am I to hold her back from getting the care she needs, you know? Okay, sorry about that. I wanted to check my graphic settings and make sure they're up as much as possible without lag. Oh, look, a deer or an elk or something. That's cool. So we're in the Colorado. Uh, some more story. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. Uh-oh. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. So sad. 1989. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. Aww. 
Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. So I'm guessing this is the job. Okay. Enter the lookout tower. So far, it's a very, very pretty game. Oh, I can zoom. The moon shining there is just amazing. Can't wait to go up here and look around. Hopefully, the recording isn't too laggy. I'm getting, I'm getting okay frames. I got it on uh, Ultra, I think. That's very detailed. But the clouds and everything looks amazing. So let's go on up here and see what we got to work with. Okay. Okay then. I turned it on. Oh, radio. Hold left shit to activate the radio. Oh, okay. Um, left. hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that... That's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? I turned on the subtitles. People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Uh, you've killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody's back home can stand you. Uh, let's okay, go with mom. Um... Probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? Well, she also says I fuck immature men. But Whoa, uh, okay. No who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. I'm going now. <laughs> just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. Is that her? I don't know anything about you. Nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. This is perfect because it's not too low. And it, I have a little water.